Today's November 21st BBWA Awards week has completed. Paul Skeens comes home with some hardware. Your rookie of the year. Roster stuff's happening this week. Let's talk tenders. You're listening to the Bridge to Bucktober podcast. Yins guys, thank you for listening to the Bridge to Bucktober podcast where we talk all about them Pittsburgh Pirates and that. My name is Josh. His name is Jake. What's up, Jake? What's going on, man? Well, it's going all right. There's a there's a football game on tonight. <laughs> yeah, a little, uh, <laughs> it's a little snowy game. Yeah, Got we the are. Uh, in the air. Yeah. So we're going to be pretty much alone here tonight, I would imagine. Yeah. Yeah. Shoot a little test just to make sure we're getting... Hey, we are getting chats. Just in case. What are you you drinking tonight, bro? We are having a 1919 again. Nice. So my can is very funny. I'm going to take my first drink out of the can. You'll see why in a second. But local brewery down here, they brews their own root beer. Okay. So I got them to, you know, pack me up a can. So there's that. So I'll take this first drink out of the can because it's funny. They put them in these 32 ounce cans. Okay. (laughs) What do you got there? It's Fly Llama Brewing Company. They do their own their own root beer. It's it's really good. In uh, in Biloxi. I'm a. Now that I took that first drink out of this ginormous can, I'm gonna pour the rest into my Permanis glass. <laughs> well, it looks like we're trying this out on Twitter, uh, for the first time. But it looks like the chat is just not working. So, I don't see how I can get it to pull in the chat. So, if that matters to you, <laughs> then there you go. All right. done. right. I'm done messing with that. And if it bothers me anymore, I will 100% just turn it off. How's that sound to you, Jake? Or just, or just let it go and not worry about it. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. But like, we're not going to see any of the chat there from the yeah Twitter side unless it, unless I can figure that out, which doesn't look like I can right now. So it's fine. It is. Everything's fine. everything's fine. This is fine. So, um, yeah, Jake, Paul Skeens, man. Yeah. We've been talking a lot about Paul Skeens lately, and for good reason. Mm-hmm. He's kind of He's the god. Stud. <laughs> He's a stud. <laughs> Received a eighth place vote in the MVP award, which was wild. Yeah. Yeah, we were talking about that before, and I'm not really sure how... Uh, so they do 10. They do 10. You found out. They, they do, do 10. 10. Yeah, okay. they, I, I found the vote totals, and he got three points. So you get three points for an eighth place vote. It was the only vote he got. He didn't get a ninth or a tenth. Just one eighth place. Um, same as Teoscar Hernandez. Okay. Um, but, yeah, looks like 10, 10 votes total. Obviously, 30 people voted Shohei won. Which which brings up my my uh, off topic question: How many of these Dagum awards is he going to win in a row? How many more is he going to get? Two in a row. Shohei. How many does he have in a row? I guess they're not in a row, but he's yeah. got three already. He's got three. He won two of them back to back. He has won all three unanimously. 
Yeah. I mean, this is what kind of a special player he is. This is unprecedented. And uh, I think that, I think we're, we all are well aware of that. Yeah. You know what I mean? So I, I think that's just where we're at. Just looking at some of the results now, because I have them both pulled up. Bobby Witt Jr. unanimously wins second place in the American yeah. League. Yeah. That's wild. Of course, Judge, you know, getting the unanimous first place. Mm hmm. That's crazy. Yeah. Um, obviously, not a whole lot there for the Pirates uh, outside of Cy Young. It was nice to see Paul Skeens represented well. Uh, third place vote. Um, he got, uh, did I write that down? No, I didn't. I think it was like 13 third place votes, something like that. He did receive a second place vote, uh, but he finished third. Mm. And so, um, yeah, I mean, pretty cool to receive that second place vote, I guess, over top of somebody who probably didn't have to receive that. I'm not sure yeah. why somebody didn't like Zach Wheeler or what well, had to be Zach Wheeler. Cause First place was, well, I guess it didn't have to. Well, yeah, I don't know. Anyway, I didn't write those down. What I did write down was rookie of the year was 23 to 7 on that first place vote. 23 to 7 votes uh, against Jackson Merrill. Jackson Merrill, 7 to 23 as far as second place. So it was only them two. Yeah. And then Churio got 26 third place votes. He was right there. And Shota got four. And then that's like, that's the list, man. You know what I mean? Yeah. Well, I imagine there's probably, like you said, if they do go 10, I imagine there's other people. But as far as the one, two, three, it was completely those four guys. Right. So, yeah. um, really good. Uh, we did, if, if you're into that thing, I did a live stream. I had the two guys, Adam and Scott from Bucko Banner and I, had Jim Rosati from NS9. And we basically just hung out and watched it and, kind of chatted. So it's pretty cool. Uh, if you want to go back and watch it, uh, obviously we'd like to do some more of that kind of stuff in the future. Um, maybe just to, just to do something, just to hang out something a little less, um, I guess less formal, you know what I mean? Coming up with something, it just really just kind of hanging out, but, um, we'll try to do some of those things in the future too. I thought it was a good time. Mm hmm. Um, so we're going to talk about, uh, some of the other roster things that are happening. These are the off season things that people talk about, um, rosters. There was the rule five protection deadline. The non-tender deadline is tomorrow. So we're going to get into that. I think that's what's in front of us right now. Um, and then if there's anything else we can get into, I mean, we might even poke around at maybe some of the players out there who might possibly be non-tendered that maybe we could be interested in. In in seeing, um, and seeing the pirates maybe you know bring to spring training or something like that. Maybe there's nothing. I don't know what you I don't know what you looked at and all that stuff. But um, but we're gonna get into that. So did you see uh, right before we do? Did you see that uh, Manfred came out and made some comments again about the robo ups? I did. Um, I didn't pay super close attention to it, but I did notice. What is it? Thirteen ballparks in spring. Yeah, I think it's 13. I wonder if they're doing it like a mix between Arizona and Florida. I wonder if they're doing like one or the other. I don't know if maybe some of them, I mean, like, cause we know that when you go through spring training, there's some of them that's like, we don't even have this thing. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like we yeah. go to some parks and we're like, well, we don't have stack cast today. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And so this is, it's, I would imagine it's just the, the fields that are equipped for that. Um, I would assume, and I don't think they, I don't know if they, put a list out there or not. I didn't see if they did, but I would assume Lee Con Park would probably be on that list. You think? You would think. You would so think. there's two questions here. Do they have a video board? I don't think I they think, do. No? I think they just have a scoreboard. So my question would be, so it, it does have StatCast. So they'd be able mm -hmm. to do all the things, right? But if they don't have a video board, how can they show it? So they're probably only going to be able to do it with places that have a video board. Yeah. So Lecom might not be on the list if that's the case, because 
because what was announced was they are going to do this in spring training. 13 parks are going to start doing this this spring training and essentially, you know, test it out at, at this level and whatnot. But also, um, they're only doing challenge system as far as as far as robot umps go, which to be honest with you, I don't really even like the term robot umps. To me, there are two different things. There's challenge and there's robot umps. To me, yeah. I don't know. I mean, that's not the way that it's being used right now, but to me, robot umps is every single pitch. Yeah. Right? They're just, it gets called for you. The umpire is basically just a relay man. To me, that's robo umps. The challenge system is every bit the umpire's calling every single pitch. The only time the ABS comes into play is if it is challenged and then they check the board. That's it. So this is like, we yeah. can call it robo-umps all we want. Technically, it has nothing to do with robo-umps. And I hope it never does, Jake. That's my opinion on it. <laughs> I know that we've had some conversations yeah. about it. And I this is like, I'll, I'll get your take on this because for me, it's like polar opposites. I think the challenge system improves the game that exists right now. I think it's awesome. It's fun. Mm -hmm. It engages the crowd. It gives you a strategy because you can't challenge every pitch because you can only be wrong twice. Once you're wrong twice, your team has no more. Obviously, they yeah. can adjust that number if they want, but you can be right as many times as you want. In Columbus one day, I saw a team get, I saw an umpire get like eight straight that he got wrong and the teams just kept going. And we were <laughs> like, that's eight in a row and neither team had lost one yet. Right. I was at another game where I only saw three challenges or I only saw five challenges, three from one team, because there was only one that got that got right. And the ump was right. Four out of five challenges. So <laughs> like there, you know what I mean? You're going to get a different uh, you're going to get a different result every time. But at the same time, you watch it real time with everyone else. And you think about heckling. Right. I'm the guy at the game, as Gary called me out earlier today when I was talking about this on Twitter. I'm the guy at the game who pulls up game day every time I think an umpire looks like it's not going well. I'm pulling up game day and I'm looking and I'm looking and I'm looking because there's guys yelling, oh, come on, blue. You know what I mean? Um, so there's two things. There's two things that I'm doing is learn the umpire's name, right? <laughs> that's what we were doing at the shows, right? Learn the umpire's yeah. name. We don't call him blue in the major leagues. So we're going to learn his name and we're going to call him out specifically by name. Right? So if his name's Charlie, our heck was, come on, Charlie. I can see it from here. <laughs> <laughs> you just don't go with blue. The second thing is, is check it out because I could sit there and complain at a game, but if the pitches are there, and I just don't think they are, then you're yelling at the wrong guy. <laughs> you got to be yelling at your hitters like, hey, guys, <laughs> yeah. swing the bat. <laughs> so, you know yeah, what I mean? Yeah, I, I, I like the challenge system. I don't want to see it be in every pitch. I'm not like a robo-ump guy. Yeah, I, I guess like, I didn't finish I, I, that, right? I didn't finish that thought. It's the same as what you're saying right now. Mm -hmm. As I think it's great, I think that the opposite, exactly like you're saying, I think it's awful. Yeah. I think it's yep. it's a completely different direction. I think one makes the game better, and it's not just like, I'm okay with this, I don't want that. It's not that. I actually really like it, not just I'm okay with it. I think we need it. I love it. It's a great aspect of the game. It's a lot of fun. I'm mm -hmm. here for it. Yeah, same. I, I I will never I will never say that I I am anything other than I love the human element of the game where the umpires are calling. But at the end of the day, the big ones we gotta get right. Yeah. And I, I'm I'm I don't like the ticky tack. I think they need to limit some of the challenges that they. I'm sorry. <laughs> there should be an indefinite thing right above bases. Like if I slide in and hit it and I'm pop slide and my foot comes up a little bit and you still have the tack. I'm sorry. I beat the play. I'm safe. So, you, if so I slide past it. I'm out. So you think uh, in the NFL, 
the, you know, the pylon continues for infinity, right? Mm -hmm. However they say it. So you're saying, and what you would propose the rule to be is that infinity straight up in the air. If you're above second base, you're on second. Mm -hmm. I think you have to touch it first. Once you, yeah, once you touch it, once you can make contact, like I can't be sliding with my foot above the base and be called safe. Right. Or be like jumping the base. Like if you're, you know, it's not when your foot comes above it, you have right. to actually hit the base. But yes. once you hit it, if you pop up a little bit, you're allowed to pop up a little bit. Yeah. So on, long as you land back on the base. How about that? Yes. Yes. And that's 100% why it would be straight up. Right. They're never going to do that. This is just part of what it is. I agree with what you're saying, though. I think the the pop-up, you never get that call. But then again, slide better at this point. And I kind of am for it in that way. The more I think about it, the more I'm like, you know what? Just slide better. That's not sliding good or not good, though. That's going in hard and your momentum just picking you up a little bit. But isn't that part of it, though? It, it, because if I, from a defensive standpoint, I'm saying you got to be safe. You can't just run like it's like first base. You can run through it. You can sprint all the way until you get through it. You can't do that at second base. And that's right. it. That's that's. You know, as a defender, I'm like, yeah, you have to slow down. And so I think about that with the sliding, with the over sliding the bag, or even like a slide so hard, like a pop up slide that you actually pop up because it's really it's momentum. It's because you slid so hard. Like, I'm just uh, I'm saying you need to you need to be able to slow it down and to hit it and and be there. And so I I think that's part of it. I think everybody's waiting to slide too late. Because they're trying to to run as far as they can. That's what's causing them to overslide. That's what's causing them to pop up on pop-up slides. That's what's causing them to get injured. You need to slide earlier. These, sli these slides are way too late in that way. Yeah, I agree with that I'm too. not sharing that, Bucko Mike. <laughs> <laughs> as I share it. We're not going to repeat it for the audio listeners. But hey, you know, do your thing. Do you think you wanted to know what that was? Get on the YouTube page, watch the video, subscribe, <laughs> all the things. Yeah, I mean, you may as well take an opportunity to say that. Please subscribe to things. Um, please subscribe to the podcast if you're listening to it, wherever you're listening. And on YouTube, YouTube, especially right now, we'd really like to push to get some more subscribers on YouTube. Uh, right now, it's really. <laughs> I, I don't know how this is going to come off, Jake, but, um, <laughs> you know, I'm, I am who I am. And right now it's kind of not worth like a whole lot of effort to do anything extra other than the shows on YouTube, just because like, you know, that my time's important to me. Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, if that number gets to be a lot bigger on YouTube, then, you know, maybe some more content, uh, is, is more worth it. Yeah. I don't know. Not that, you know, the 150 aren't worth it. You guys are totally awesome. Especially the ones who come by, uh, come back for the live shows on Sundays and Thursdays. That's, I, I definitely love that. Um, anyway, uh, Bucko Mike says pirates too quiet. Yeah. I'm going to, I'm going to echo that a little bit here. It feels very quiet. What do we got? We got Matt Hague's the hitting coach. We got a new assistant pitching coach. In Brent Strom. Uh, we've got the, the bullpen catcher's been uh, promoted to... Um, catching coach. Catching coach. Help me out. Why is that name leaving me right now? Oh my gosh, you got to help me with that. With his name? Yeah, Jordan. Why can't I think of his name? <laughs> anyway, you guys know. Yeah. Somebody throw it in the, in the chat right now. So I... Yeah, I mean, we got coaches. We've got Rule 5 protection deadline was Wednesday. And the Pirates did nothing, Jake. Is that any bit surprising to you? I, I hear, Who would you protect in this case, right? Uh, Billy Cook and Nick York were the two on my radar. Both of those guys got called up. Who else is left? This is you're you're talking to my weakness right now, man. I do sure. not know our okay. roster well. So Siani or Eddie Yeen, neither one of those guys are going to get drafted. 
You know what I'm saying? Like I Right. Neither one of those guys are getting drafted and somebody nobody's putting those guys on their major league roster all year. So I just don't uh I, I don't think that there needed to be anything there. There was nobody to right. protect now that Billy Cook and Nick York are already moved up. Um was there any was there somebody else too? Because Ashcraft and Burroughs were already on there. Was there anybody else that actually needed to be protected that got called up? I don't think so. I don't think so. Um, yeah, Bucko Mike says the catcher prospect in Greensboro. That's the other thing. Um, yeah. I'm doing great with the names right now. <laughs> anyway, it's the same thing. Like, Nobody's going to put him on their major league team. No. So good player and hopefully mm-hmm. can work his way into something, but just not worth. You had two open spots. That's the only reason you asked the question, right? If you've got two available spots on your 40, man, wouldn't you just fill them to make sure? Well, you only get so many uh, options on a player too. And so you're starting all that. You're starting all those options. So if, if they if you can keep them for a, a year and you know as they get closer, you'll have a little more... Um, you'll have a little more urgency to add them. Yeah. So, and and really, I mean, that's, we got 38 man, 40 man roster right now. And where does it go from here? Right? Because Mm -hmm. there's a chance after tomorrow, after as let's be, let's be clear after Friday, after Friday, uh, they're going to have some other guys that possibly might come off this roster because the non-tender deadline is Friday. Okay. So let's mm-hmm. get into that. I think that's kind of the the big thing right now. It's what's sitting right in front of us. There's four guys who are kind of the talk of everyone, right? As as candidates of non-tender candidates based on, Jake, based on the money that they're about to make. Mm-hmm. Low-hanging fruit. Alika Williams is projected to make $1.3 million. Is this a guy that... Maybe you non-tender, or do you keep him around a little bit, maybe offer him a little less than that and either go to arbitration with him, or you have the ability that if you if you trade or sign enough players this offseason, he's a guy that just ends up getting never mind or thrown into a trade package or something like that. Yeah, Where are you at a, on him? I think I don't know that he's worth 1.3 million, but I think he's worth keeping around. Um, I don't, I don't dislike Alika Williams. Um, I think he's a guy that just provides depth in our system. I don't, I don't see him getting a, a good look at, at, as our shortstop, but he's a guy that if there's injuries, I wouldn't feel that terrible having him. I, I've seen him. I, I know what he is. I know he's a light hitting, but he's good defense. Yeah, I mean, I what's know. what's league minimum right now? I mean, it's really not that far away from one point three million. Really not. It's like what eight something. It's like eight something some. for that point. Uh oh. No Bucko audio. Mike says no audio for Uncle Jake. Go ahead and talk for me. Yeah, I'm talking. Nope, no audio. Interesting. Hmm. This whole time. Say something again. <laughs> Say something. Okay, you're on the nerve to say something. You're on our on our audio, but you're not coming in on the video right now. Hmm. Oh boy. It's devastating. Talk now. Talking. All right, we got him. (laughs) We got Jake. So I'm gonna have to that's gonna be fun for everybody watching the video. Yeah, I wonder when that was. I mean, it was. It's probably been the whole time. Hmm. Dave says well, we could see him, but not hear him. All right, I will probably have to take this down and re-upload a video of this episode. <laughs> um, looks like I'm not going to bed early tonight. <laughs> uh, for the audio listeners, um. You've had no problem. He's been live the whole time. <laughs> so, 
So the, I'll say this: uh, there's been a diff- there's a little bit of a different setup when it comes to the live stream versus this, and so that's probably just uh, something that came from that. I was playing music, I was playing myself, and everything was coming through there. Just not you. <laughs> so, all right. Well, um, my bad, guys, and. Um, <laughs> Bucko Mike <laughs> says you can do that when Jim Rosati's on the show. Yeah. No. Um, anyway, well, that's great. So you guys don't know what Jake thinks about Alika Williams, and we're going to leave it that way. Um, go listen to the audio or wait for this thing to be reposted because I'll, I'll have to do some edits and repost it later. So um, anyway, let's move on um, past him. We've got three more. Let's, let's go to the next one. Let's go to Connor Joe. Projected 3.2 million in in arbitration. Obviously, with all these guys, like you could offer two and a half. And if he takes it, you don't ever have to go to arbitration, and that number doesn't mean anything. If you tender him a contract for two and a half, are you doing that? Are you tendering him a contract for two and a half? Which, like I said, he doesn't have to accept, you just have to offer it. If you put one on the table, he stays on your team for now. And then you deal with it later, or he accepts two and a half and you move on. Uh, what, or do you just non tender him and say, I don't want to have to owe him anything? He's done, he's gone forever. Where are you at on Connor Joe? I'm in a, I'm in, I'm in between on this one because I don't, I don't want to see Connor Joe in a pirate uniform next year. Mm. Well, then it's easy I, as that, but it's, but it's not because I think he, I think you can package him in a trade that'll help you get somebody like an, obviously an addition to something, you know what I mean? Hey, we'll, we'll throw Joe in as a, and I think he helps. I think he helps pull the trigger on, on a trade. Um, but I don't, I don't, I don't know if I take the chance that somebody takes him. I, I disagree. I don't think that Connor Joe has that pull like he did last off season. I think now that we've seen it two years in a row, I don't think it's there. Yeah. I think your best bet was to deal him in June or a last off season. I just don't think he has that, that trade value that he had before anymore. I don't think it's there. And so for me, I, I think this is the time that I actually do with Billy Cook being available and essentially being the same player, but a little bit better on defense, actually quite a bit better on defense. Um, but with the same sort of offensive potential, um, you know, I, I, to me, I, I, I w I would just go that route and I would say, I don't need that player, but if I wanted it and I did need it, I have another guy here who fits that mold, who can help me at first base and play outfield. You know what I mean? Like that. Yeah. I have that. Yeah, that I have sense. that guy. And so for this guy to make any amount of money, whether it's 2 million, whether it's 3.2 million, because the thing is, is if you lowball it so far and offer him 2 million and he, and he just doesn't like he sits on that or he doesn't take it or whatever. And then you just go to arbitration with him. But if you, you have all that time, that you can essentially make a decision between now and arbitration and not have to actually go through that process. Like you're saying, put him in a trade, actually DFA him, stuff like that. So I could see that, but I think at this point, if you're saying, I don't want to see him in a uniform, then that's it. I just non-tender him and I don't mess around with the money because I have Billy Cook right there. Yeah. Who I think can can field that position, and you also have you also have Triolo who can play some first base, and then you know what I mean. Obviously, we're we're looking at at more. Mm-hmm. So we're I mean Andy Rodriguez, you you have guys that you could play there. Didn't Alika Williams play first base for us in a game? I think so. So I mean, and you know you could put Nick York there, and he'd figure it out. You know, there's guys IKF could do it. He could figure it out. Joey Bart could figure it out. There are things that can happen in a sense like that where you can say like, no, I think we can, I think we'd be able to make this happen. 
Steel City uh, DW says, I can't imagine Connor Joe having much pull this year. 33 uh, by the break, 688 OPS last year. Can't imagine what you get for that. Yeah, and I mean, even even as a throwing guy, like you were saying, just like, hey, just yeah. a guy to get you over the edge. I just don't think that it's there. Like, I don't know. I don't even know what team would see that as anything. If anything, it would be, we already have a deal, and then you just say, hey, do you mind if we throw him in? <laughs> you don't You don't think a guy like Connor Joe would help you in a trade with, like, White Sox or the A's or, you know, anybody? Like, they'll take anybody who's been in the major leagues before. Um... I don't know. I really don't think so. Maybe Colorado cuz he's been there. There might be something there where they would say like, "Yeah, I mean, we have a position. We're not really we have a guy who's not ready to play right field. He can play right field. If that guy gets good, we'll we'll deal with it." But but outside of that, I I don't think I don't think so. I mean, they just lost Blackman, I mean, right? That's so That's fair. I just yeah, I don't know. I think I think when you're offloading a bunch of people and you're a terrible team and somebody's going to sweet just not you know quote unquote sweeten the deal. I'm going to give you these prospects and I'll give you this guy here who can play right now. You obviously really don't care if you're winning or losing right now. Yeah, I think he'll get a job like that, but not. I think somebody would be willing to give him uh, you know a buck and a half and say, come play for us or maybe two million, two and a half million. Right. But I don't think anybody wants to take him and go to arbitration with him. Right. You know what I mean? And so I think once it's there, he's, he's going to do that. Bucko Mike's already got him in there. So let's go to the next guy here. Uh, BDLC. What Brian De La Cruz, he's got an option to go down to the minor leagues. And that is interesting to me. However, the projected is $4 million. Yeah, you, this one's this one's tough because I don't think he's... he's If he goes to arbitration, he's going to win. Um, I mean, he hit 21 homers last year. That's what, two straight years he's hit 20-plus? Uh, 19 and 21, so he's got 40 in the okay. last two years. Yeah. I mean, it's a guy with some power. They, you know, power t- speaks dollars. Um, yeah, he also had a negative 0.3 war in 23 and a negative 1.5 war last year. So I, I don't know that, that that's necessarily true because you know, they're going to favor to that war statistic. Now this is baseball reference war. I don't, I don't have fan graphs in front of me, so I'm not sure of the difference of that, but like, yeah, the home runs are there. But outside of that, like a 654 OPS last year stinks. You know what I'm saying? And so, you know, when you look at that, it's like, man, I mean, here's the thing, though. Here's the thing for me. We saw him for 44 games. Mm -hmm. He had a 707 OPS with with the Marlins, which is still not great. It's about what he's done so far. He's already 27 years old. So there's a little bit there that makes you think, well, what makes you think he's going to figure it out now? Well, sometimes power takes longer. That's been true forever, right? I mean, look yeah. at what Brent Rooker's doing right now. Look what Jose Bautista did after he started becoming, uh, you know, uh, older and and learning his way through things. He's not a good defender though, and I don't right. know that that goes away. Yeah, I think he's about where he's going to be defensively. And that's not a guy that you're gonna. That's not a guy that you're gonna. Um, that you're gonna move at all to like to DH either. Like it's, he's not, right. an, he's not enough bat to, to DH. So it's not even something there. The only thing I would say in favor of keeping him, the only thing I would say is that what he did here was essentially a slump. We saw nothing. We saw not what he is. I will say that that is not mm-hmm. what he is. I don't think he's much better, but he's better than, than what we saw. And I wonder if there's any part of Sherrington that just wants to see at least that he has an option. If you give him one more shot, even if it's for 4 million, he's got an option. 
Send him yeah. to AAA. If he figures it out, then you fig then you got away with it. If he doesn't, you cut ties with him. It's it's only four million dollars. I know that that's a lot for a guy who's played in AAA, but dude, I'm stretching right now. I'm really trying <laughs> because the thing is, is like I understand he wasn't good for us, but he wasn't as bad in the last two seasons. Yeah. And we know that he's streaky. We've been told that he's streaky. And so we can see that. I think that this is a guy that they, I could, I could see them keeping a hold of. We just said, Jake, yeah. we we're already getting rid of Connor Joe at least. And that's 37 players on the 40 man roster. And I, I hate to tell you that, you know, these are the four that we're talking about. There's one more here, but are we not going to talk about Joshua Palacios? Are we not going to talk about Trey Cabbage? Are we not going to talk about G1 Bay? Are we not going to talk about, uh, I wasn't scrolling fast enough, Tristan Gray? I mean, I, you pick <laughs> these guys up to keep a hold of them, right? But you see yeah. what I'm saying here. There's a, there's a pattern here. There's other guys on this team that aren't good too right now. Are we not going to talk about Joey Wentz, who right now is the only left-handed reliever? That's it. Hunter Stratton isn't even going to play next year. At some point, he might get DFA'd. Yeah. So, I mean, there's guys here that I think you could look at and say, you know, there's there's room on this roster for BDLC. <laughs> and it really I, is. And, and, you know, like Bucko Mike says here, not a good way to spend $4 million. I think we get hung up in, like, the Pirates way and saying that $4 million is a lot of money. It's not. It's not no. a lot of money. I don't care who we are. I don't care. We all agree. Anybody who listens to this show usually would agree that the Pirates don't spend enough money. Mm -hmm. So we can't say that in one breath and then say that $4 million is a lot of money in the next breath or else we're giving them a reason not to spend it. You know what I'm saying? I mean, I come out yeah. here all the time and tell you that Key Brian Hayes is not even making league average money. He's less than that. He's not even getting paid to be who he is if he's healthy, obviously. Right, right. So the thing is, is, uh, you know, he says Wentz will be worked with. Of course he will because he's cheaper, right? And the whole reason this comes up is because he's quote unquote projected at four million. I'm not sure if they don't tender him two that he doesn't take it, or maybe three. Let's say three. What's your cutoff? You know what I mean? What did he make yeah. last year? Does baseball reference have that? I know, I know, uh I know Ethan does. I don't have his spreadsheet open right now. You know what? I'll just open it. Give me your thoughts there while I look up his, what he made. Yeah. I mean, I'm, I'm with you on that. I think, I think he's a guy with his power potential. I just think that, you know, you take a flyer on this guy two two to $3 million. And if he doesn't show improvement in spring training, then you start him off in, in the minors and maybe you start him off the minors, no matter what. And just be like, we signed this guy and he's going to play your depth. Hopefully that's a scenario. That's my only other thing with him yeah. is I, you know, it, it's going to, it's going to affect, you know, what our off season is going to look like. If they think that he's got it and they're like, you know, we'll go to bat with BDLC. Then I'm like, shoot. They're not going to add anybody. BDLC was making, uh, there's no way, there's no way that he makes $4 million next year. <laughs> I, I see that. Making the, league minimum. Yeah. I mean, I don't even know. Like it, it, we don't, we're only on the hook for 250,000, right? Because we got him so late. So I don't know what he was making, but 250,000, like it couldn't have been all that much. Yeah. I mean, if, if it's 2 million, I'm signing that. I'm tendering that all day. And I, and I don't think it is, right? I mean, and all we have right now is, is a projected number. Mm -hmm. That's all we have right now. But this is arbitration one for him? I don't know. 
I I don't see I don't see them I see them winning. If they go to three million, they're winning that arbitration case. It's not going to be four million. And so that's the question for me is where do they go from here? If they offer him a contract at let's say two and a half, the guy has hit 40 home runs in the last two years. Let's not forget that there is something of value that exists in this player. Mm -hmm. You just but it's right now, okay. So let's say this, Jake. He's got major league power. He's got major league nothing else. So the problem is, is can you get major league at bats? Right. If you can get major league at bats, the power will play. Mm -hmm. So he's only got one choice. He's only got one, one chance rather. And so, uh, you know, for me, that's it. He's got major league power and it stops there. So if you can do it for 3 million and you, yeah, you do it. I think Yeah. just because you have the room. That's the only reason. If it was, if this was a crunch, I don't even try this. Right. And trust me, the whole time I'm saying this, like, don't, don't hear this and say this guy's a this guy likes BDLC. Like, that's literally not it, right? It is. It's just the fact that he can play in Indianapolis for three million dollars, yeah. right? And it, it's not going to hurt anyone. And if he figures it out, right. you win. If he doesn't, you let him go. Literally, all you spent was $3 million. Big deal. It didn't hurt anything. And that if you think $3 million is going to hurt the, the bottom line for this team, then yeah, then just keep complaining about the fact that $3 million should never hurt the bottom line of this team. Because <laughs> that's still, still the truth, right? Yeah, yeah. It's chump change, man. For these guys. Right. So, whatever. But... If you if you really think he's going to win his arbitration case and he's going to make four million dollars, sure, cut him. I guess that's where I'm at. Cut him. Don't offer him a contract. Let him go to free agency. Try to re-sign him for one and a half. Yeah, you might be the only team to do it. <laughs> I doubt it. You're right. There'll be somebody. Yeah, there'll be somebody who isn't trying to win. That'll give him a chance to to prove himself. Or, or yeah. not who isn't, let's say this, who is maybe not trying to win, but just isn't in a position where they think they have a chance. Right. They'd right. sign a guy like that just to bridge the gap. So, <laughs> Dave says, give him a contract with incentives like Rowdy so we can not give it to him. Yeah. I don't think you can do incentives based on how many home runs you hit anymore. I think there's something against that. So I think that's why they do these plate appearance ones because basically what they say is if you're good enough to get 500 at bats, you're good enough to get the extra money, right? Yeah. So the thing is, is for these teams, uh, you know, I, I'm sorry to bring up a sour subject here, but if you're not good enough, then you're going to get cut before you hit that number. Sorry. Right. That's the way it goes. You signed the contract. Mm -hmm. So uh, I don't know. I, I while I don't agree with what happened, I also agree with the fact that like they didn't do anything nobody else would do. This isn't a Pirates thing. Everybody right. else would have done the same exact thing. Yeah. So outside of maybe a couple, because of the fact that he had some like specific moments. Outside of that, this is you know par for the course. Anyway, last one we'll talk about, maybe the most polarizing, although I think the most silly, David Bednar. Yeah. Got him. It, you yeah, offer him it's contract. so easy. It's so easy. Just, yeah, you figure it out. The projection is 6.6. .6. That's what freaks everybody out. If you think one season's enough after the guy was an elite top five closer, and I know everybody recency bias is going to make you say, like, oh, I never believed in him. If you <laughs> never believed in him, you're impossible. Because <laughs> he's electric. His stuff was just as good last year as it's ever been. He was tipping pitches, and he wasn't, he wasn't locating. Uh, whatever, but like the pitches are still live. He's not, he's not losing it physically. The velocity actually went up, not down. He's fine. Yeah. And, and you just hired a guy who is actually like highly regarded for finding, uh, for finding, uh, when you're tipping pitches and fixing it. Like he's good at that. Like that people <laughs> know that he's good at that. Yeah. No, no, I'm, I, whatever it is, I'll, I'll pay him. Um, 
So, you know, that's it. Yeah, Bucko Mike says, Rook, Rockies did that with Stallings. They DFA'd him as soon as he was available. They went out and got him again. Yeah, which is what I kind of thought was happening with uh, with uh, Travis Darno in Atlanta. I thought they, that's what they were doing. But Well, you run the risk, right? Did. You run the right. risk that somebody else offers a little bit more. Yeah. And apparently they were either cutting ties or somebody offered a little bit more and he went back to the Braves and said, well, I mean, I could sign there. Mm -hmm. And they either said, okay, or this is our offer. (laughs) You know what I mean? Good good luck winning in Anaheim. Yeah. (laughs) They're just grabbing everybody over there. But yeah, I mean, to me, this is easy. And I would offer him a contract of five and a half. And I think it would make sense to me if Bednar was like, I'll take that. I'll take that. Yeah. I don't need to make what everybody thinks I should make because I know that my season wasn't good enough. I'll take that. And he's worth that. Dude, oh, he was he was yeah. dominant and he wasn't even making a million dollars. You pay pay him back a little bit. Pay you're paying him yeah, for what he already for sure. what he's already done for you. That's okay. I'm okay with that. Mm-hmm. Pay him. Any of these other guys interesting to you? You know, I went down and I named some guys that I'm like, are are you really going to offer G1 Bay a contract? He's arbitration, isn't he? Maybe he's not. Let's go back here. He's not. So our arbitration guys are Falter, Holderman, Bart, uh, BDLC, Oviedo, Connor Joe, Bednar, Santana Hayes, IKF Reynolds. Well, no, I'm sorry. From Hayes up is not. They're all signed. So like those are our arbitration guys. So yeah, I mean, I don't think there's a way you don't offer contracts to all the league minimum guys. Yeah. I just, I don't think there's a way that you don't offer them to all those guys. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Jack Sawinski. Oh yeah. Yeah. Too easy. Mm-hmm. All those guys get offers. And, and like I said, it's it's so easy. It's it's easy enough that you can just like I said, you can just cut them if it's not ta- if it's not cutting it. Right. So, no big deal there. Um I don't think this is all that difficult for the Pirates tomorrow. No, I don't either. I, it's pretty cut and dry. So for you, let's say it this way. So if you're making the shots, calling the shots, you're going to keep Bednar, you're going to keep Alika, and are you keeping Joe or BDLC? Are you keeping all these guys? I, I, I'm probably keeping all these guys. If it's me, I'm, I'm, at least, I'm at least tendering them now. And then we'll see what happens. I, Basically, I would tender Joe just to try to throw him into a deal. BDLC just to try to get him cheaper. So BDLC, you know, I, you know yeah, I mean, it, but if you offer him a contract, like you're essentially like, I don't know what the what the deal is, but like I think you're going you to arbitration still, with him. You can still negotiate all the way up to arbitration. You can negotiate. Mm-hmm. If he's not taking it and he wants to take you to arbitration, right? you may end up paying him $4 million. I think for me... I think I I think I non tendered De La Cruz and I try to re sign him for my price because and the only reason I say that I guess if it's me right if it's me this, right. I not I'm not getting in be in, in Sherrington's head if it's me I just cut him loose I cut Joe loose and I cut Alika loose Bednar's the only one I offer what do I think they'll do Connor Joe's gone they're keeping Alika. And I think the De La Cruz could go either way. They could either non-tender him and try to re-sign him because Sherrington went and got him. He at least believes that there's something there or he wouldn't have got him. Right. So that's the thing. Does Sherrington raise his hand and say, I got this one wrong and just cut ties with him and then watch and see if he tries to sign him for half that. Does that make sense? Yeah. So what do you think Sherrington does in that same case? I think Bednar's staying. I think that's silly. It's a silly conversation, Jake. It's silly. I mean, I wouldn't, I wouldn't be surprised if, if Joe, De La Cruz and Williams all get non-tendered. It wouldn't surprise me. Yeah. I think he'll keep Williams for sure. 
But I guess, I don't know. I guess you're right. I wouldn't be surprised. I think he does it. It won't surprise me. Yeah, I think the only only two that have question marks are De La Cruz and Connor Joe. Mm-hmm. To be honest. Um, I think he keeps Williams, but I also wouldn't be surprised if he doesn't. I get it. Yeah, I'm there. Still City DW says, who will get my wrath with Andy Haynes gone? I need someone to blame. <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> Maybe not. You can still blame Andy Haynes? Is that what you're saying? No, I'm saying like, well, yeah, you could blame Andy Haynes because we could come out and hit well this year. No one to blame if we're hitting well, except we can blame Andy Haynes for the past struggles. Yeah, but you got to live there. You got to have somebody to blame. <laughs> you gotta have somebody just keep blaming Bob Nutting I guess I don't know I mean that's what everybody else seems to be doing yeah so maybe that's the play maybe it's uh, Ben Sherrington that's easy he's the top of the food chain as far as baseball stuff so mm-hmm. blame him you know for whatever you want like there's gonna be something you're gonna complain about I would just say that's baseball you know what I mean like if you think it's gonna yeah. be all good it's not because baseball doesn't work that way <laughs> Right. But I think it's a good question. And we should be, you know, you gotta you gotta figure out who's the guy you're gonna go after. <laughs> Shelton's still there. What are you talking about, right. man? Yeah. What are you talking about? Dave White says if they non tender Bednar, more billboards will go up in Pittsburgh. I actually don't know, <laughs> man. There's a lot of people on this cut Bednar thing. A lot of people. Silly. If That's they silly. did that, my goodness, the rest of the league is going to be licking their lips. Yep. Like you idiots will take him. Yeah. I if if they did that, if they non tendered him, I bet he makes more than six point six million next year. And I bet it's more <laughs> than a one year deal. Yeah. You know what I mean? If he's just an unrestricted free agent at that point. Yeah. Hmm. That'll feel silly. It's a silly conversation. It, you're right, Dave. He'd it's a silly a, conversation. He'd end up with a three-year, $25 million deal. Yeah? We non-tendered him? You think it'd get up to 25 for three years after that year? I think they'd try to talk him down a little bit from that. But he'd make more than that. Maybe 321 Yeah. Seven a year. Something like that. Or 216. You know what I mean? Maybe something along those lines. If you wanted to go that high, but you won't go long term because you don't know. Yeah. So Pit City What says, uh, we're going to, we're wrapping it up here. Um, Let's see what a couple of these are. Pit City What says, I opened a mega box and it was terrible. (laughs) Oh, no. See, he's terrified of Bednar in 25. There were stretches. He was so consistently bad. I don't think he was healthy, and I'm not sure he will be. His velocity was up, though, man. I, yeah. I It has nothing to do with health. He was tipping his pitches. If, if you, you tip can't, a pitch in the major leagues, those hitters are good enough that no matter, almost no matter how good your stuff is, they're going to hit it. Well, but the thing is, is the stuff, yeah, the stuff was good. The, the velo was up. It's, it wasn't health. It was just the fact that like he wasn't locating his fastball up enough and he wasn't tunneling his fastball and his curveball together. Without that, they knew that when the curveball was coming. If they know yeah. when the curveball's coming, they can sit fastball and just eat. And that's exactly what was happening. And like honestly, you, you when you look at the the swing and miss gone with the stuff being up from previous years, that doesn't happen without them knowing the fastball's coming. So whether you're tipping or whether your curveball's not tunneling the right way, it, it it's so clear why he struggled. And, yeah. and we got this new assistant pitching coach who literally, uh, right there, Mike, you know, Bucko Mike here, he was having issues getting the curve over. And, and I'll even say this, not even over. It's not even about getting it over. It's about the tunneling. They yeah. knew it was a curveball, which means they didn't swing at the curveball when it was off the plate. He could get swings and miss, misses off the plate with the curveball because they thought it was a fastball. But if they know it's a curveball and they just take it every time, 
You know what I mean? You're a lot of times you're not throwing that curveball for a strike. Right. But they think it's a fastball, so you get them on a sword or you get them swinging and chasing it. That's the thing that made it different. Like if you can recognize curveball and sit fastball, it, it's it's not as effective. So health wise, honestly, I think after maybe the beginning of the year was certainly he had a spring training at the major league level. That's never good. Right. That's never right. good. But also the fact that, like I said earlier in the show, like this guy is good at this. He's not going to let him tip pitches. And, uh, you know, you fix that, you're, you're right back to vintage David Bednar. Mm-hmm. Which, by the way, we still have questions about in the month of September. J- just to throw <laughs> the, just to be completely, yeah. you know what I'm saying? We still have questions about him being solid in the month of September. So, Outside of that, I think he goes right back to being, uh, right back to being David Bednar. Um, back to uh, back to Pit City. What here? The Mega Box was terrible. Have you gotten your Mega Boxes yet, Jake? No, I get mine on the 29th. Oh, you got a you got a while to go. Yeah, I got a while to wait. Okay. Um, if, if that skeins card's still out there, maybe we'll try to do something where we can, uh, where we can open those up live or something. Uh, so last night we opened up a hobby box and, uh, our buddy Jeff opened up, uh, a breaker's delight. I, I can't even remember who they were. He got, do you remember, did I tell you who they were? No, I don't think you told me who they were. They were you said it was bad. Yeah, two pitchers, just not, not great. Um, let me tell you that I don't know. I did not tell you. I must have talked to you about it. You said two meh pitchers. Okay. Yeah. Um, I did get a Christian Encarnacion Strand Auto. I got two cards that are one was out of uh, one of 150 and one was one or no, one was one of 25 and the other one was one of uh, 15. But it was like Lane Thomas and I forget who the other one was. Um, that one you sent me. Yeah, I did. You're right. I have the picture. I sent you a picture of them. So anyway, didn't get anything Stephen crazy. Stephen Kolick. Yeah, Stephen Kolick from the Padres. And that one um, was 129 out of 150. Christian Arne- Arne- uh, Encarnacion Strand was 25 or 20 out of 25. Lane Thomas, 13 out of 15. Um, obviously, with Strand being my one auto. So. Yeah, that's basically it. I also, uh, in one of our mega boxes, I hit, uh, I hit this gold Mason win, um, which is a 49 out of 50 gold Mason win refractor. That's actually a really nice. That's a nice hit. I'm learning a lot. Katie and I are learning a lot about cards. She's all in. She's after <laughs> we opened that pack last night, she's like, all right, when's the next one coming? I'm like, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know, man. I don't know. So not get, I did get two BDLCs last night too, to which my <laughs> first one was burn it. <laughs> burn it. We don't want it. I have several skeins cards, not getting very many pirates at all. Like give me a Jared Jones, but yeah, we right. have like five skeins cards now. It's like, that's the only guy we're hitting. Yeah. As far as the pirates goes. So yeah, not bad. I got a Skeens Prism Refractor. You know, if you guys know these terms, you know. <laughs> uh, this is literally, I'm at the fine. beginning of this, right? So I have no clue. But <laughs> yeah, it, it's it's definitely been fun, man. It's definitely been fun. So heavy snow in Cleveland. Listen, we, we woke up to snow this morning here. Central Ohio. I took this picture of a stop sign. Jeez. So, yeah. 
It's no, gone. Here it's yet. mostly gone now. I don't have my blinds open now, and if I did, you couldn't be able to see outside anyway. But something about football games in the snow though are pretty fun. Yeah. All right, Jake. Well, we got to get out yet, of here. But it's but it's chilly down here. Oh, it's chilly down there. What is forty eight? Okay. All right. I'll give you that. That's chilly enough. That's chilly enough. Let's get down to forty tonight. When's it gonna warm up? I'm already there. Terrible. I'm already asking. Guys, thanks for sticking around. Please uh, hit the subscribe button down below. Always appreciate that. And uh, for those of you who are here live, thank you very much for hanging out and chatting with us. I know there's a big game on right now, so appreciate you guys uh, maybe you know watching the game and listening to us. That that's uh, that's a really cool thing. I don't take it lightly. Appreciate mm -hmm. it. Uh, yeah. Other than that, I'm gonna play some music. We're gonna get out of here. Sorry about the audio stuff. <laughs> we'll try to get it figured out. Yeah. Custom. Hey, I told you. Custom setups, custom problems. There you go. So. Thanks again, guys. Let's go, Bucks. Go, Bucks. Friday is Hawaiian shirt day. So, you know, if you want to, go ahead and uh, wear a Hawaiian shirt and jeans. Thanks for listening to my dad and Uncle Jake on the Bridge to Bucktober podcast. Follow them on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram at Bridge the Number Two Bucktober. Don't forget to subscribe so you know when new episodes are released. Clear the deck. Cannonball coming. And let's go Bucks.